My, 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 these men sure are cutting up, aren't they? Now it's Earthquake's turn. He responded to Cat Williams, calling him illiterate. He's all up in his feelings. Let's discuss it, y'all. Hit the like bell as you come onto the page. Let's get into it. So we all know that Cat Williams did say he was illiterate when he was in that Club Shay Shay show with him being interviewed by Shannon Sharp. And I think if Michael Jackson was alive, he would have had an issue too because Cat said that Michael gave Chris a nickname. And the nickname was Christmas. And he said it in a way with a lisp, which had me rolling, guys. I was cracking up. And he said, you ever had a man call you Christmas? I said, Lord have mercy. I know Chris Tucker is feeling a kind of way because he also said that he is on that Epstein Island, okay? Not Smokey. But what was he implying when he said Michael gave Chris Tucker a nickname and the nickname was Christmas? I said, Lord have mercy. I know Chris Tucker is human. All these allegations and implications and, you know, just... uh. You put it out there like if Michael was sweet on him and he was sweet on Michael. No, they were just friends, guys. Michael and Chris Tucker were good friends. That's all it was. They didn't have anything going on. But let's get back to Earthquake and the shenanigans that he's got to answer to. He felt as though he got to make a statement because now everybody's going to be thinking he's illiterate. And let me tell you something, guys. I don't think it was right for Cat Williams to do that because that can really hurt him. Because if movie directors, etc., people in the entertainment world, the movie industry world, if they think that this man is illiterate, they're not going to use him anymore for movies. It can hurt him. So it was very, very wrong what Cat Williams did. And as a matter of fact, if I was Earthquake, I would sue him. I really would file a lawsuit because that's defamation of character and it can hurt him in the long run in terms of him getting any movie roles. But I was surprised that Earthquake really didn't have a lengthy rebuttal. It was very brief and short, almost like if he really likes Cat Williams as a friend and maybe was trying to maintain some type of friendship because he really did not dog him out. So Cat Williams said that Earthquake was not in the movie because he's illiterate. He can't read. He can't follow any kind of lines, read any kind of lines because the man can't read. He's illiterate. Cat said the powers that be found out he was illiterate when they gave him a show and he had, had to he had to read them cue cards and couldn't read. But oh yes, Earthquake was not going to be denied. Let's face it guys, good press and bad press is all the same with these guys. Any kind of press is good. Mike Epps said, you didn't even include me. I was offended. As a matter of fact, I was going to send you some lines and send you some proof of some bad things in my past that you could say that I did just to mention me. You never mentioned me. I was so offended. Let me tell you, a lot of these guys want their names to be called because then people get a new interest. Like a lot of these comedians are speaking out, even if they weren't called, even if he didn't call their names, they're speaking out and they are saying, well, he shouldn't have said so-and-so about this person because they want their names to go into that trend. You know, it's trending. Cat Williams is trending. So if you attach your name to him, you're going to be trending too. And that's what they're doing. So earthquake is no exception to the rule, honey. He had to put his two cents in because his name was called. Said it what he had to say about Cat Williams saying that he couldn't read on the Breakfast Club on January the 26th. He was on the Breakfast Club. Uh, He responded quite appropriately, I may add. He said, I'm in a joke telling business. So what he had to say really didn't mean a thing. Personally speaking, he said, Cat Williams and I are cool. So I don't know where that came from. Half of the things he said about me are true, and the other half are not true. So I'm wondering, guys, which half is true? Is it a half that has to do with him reading his cue cards and couldn't read? Is he literate? Is that the other half? So he said half of it was a lie, but to each his own. But I'm wondering if they're going to be cool. He said they were cool. So are they still cool? I would think not. He said he's the kind of person, if he have a problem with someone, he's going to call them up. He's not going to get on the boop tube and air any kind of beef that they have, perceive beef that they think they have with a person or he have. He's going to 
face to face, call the person up and just discuss it. Either that or we're going to duke it out, he says. Man or man or man to man. We're going to either talk about it or we're going to duke it up. But what we're not going to do, what we're not fin to do is the way Kat did it. Go on somebody's show and talk ish about another comedian. He said he used to do a radio program on WBLS. And the goal for all these comedians being on the radio is to be syndicated, just like the Breakfast Club hosts, just like how Charlemagne and Envy, DJ Envy, are syndicated. That's the goal for all these comedians who are jumping on the bandwagon and getting their show, their talk show or, you know, the radio talk show. And so he said that's the goal. But clearly, by his response, he didn't want any issues with Cat Williams. He don't want any beef with him. He just wanted to come out and say that, no, he's not illiterate. The reason why people want to be like them is because they're syndicated. He said, first of all, you got to read when you're on a radio show, okay? It requires reading. And he said he don't know why Cat Williams went that route to throw him under the bus like that and back it up, back it up, back it up and reverse and run him over again. He said he don't know why, you know, to each his own. Everybody do what they want to do. Maybe he wanted to make some jokes out of it. Cat certainly made jokes off of his fellow comedians. A lot of people were very offended, but it seems as though Earthquake didn't, you know, he didn't find it funny, but it didn't offend him to that degree where he's going to lose sleep over it. So he appeared on The Breakfast Club, and he spoke his mind how he felt about the situation. Shannon Shannon Sharp. Yeah. I I want to talk about just that conversation, period. What has that conversation done for for, for black comedy? Um, Comedy, I don't think anything, because there wasn't no jokes in it. (laughs) (laughs) You understand? I'm in the joke-telling business. As far as Earthquake is concerned, there weren't any jokes in it. But let me tell you, for the average person, the public, there were plenty of jokes in it. We were cracking up for a whole month. Okay, it's almost a month since that aired, but we are still cracking up. Plenty of jokes in it. He didn't find it funny because he's in his feelings. Although he wants to say, oh, it's not a big deal to me. He's cool and all that. Bump that. Bump that. He's in his feelings. He's mad as hell, okay? Anybody calling you illiterate can hurt you. They can take money out of your pocket. So he should be angry. Nobody can blame him for being angry. But it's going to hit him when he goes for that audition. And the producer or the writer says to him, I'm sorry, you don't get the role. You don't have the role because we were told you can't read. And now you're proving it. You're stuttering over your lines. You can't read. And loses the part. That's when it's going to hit him. Comedy, I don't think anything because there wasn't no jokes in it. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. I'm in the joke telling business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it didn't do anything, I think, for comedy. Um, personally speaking, um, me and him was cool. So, you know, I didn't I didn't know where that came from. Um, certain thing he said about me, half was true, half was, you know, um, was a lie, you know. But um, to each his own. I don't, you know, man, I don't even get into that part of it because see I'm a type of person if I have a problem with you Charlemagne I'm gonna call you mm-hmm. and man to man and we were gonna talk it out we're gonna duke it out but we're gonna handle it man to man I don't talk behind people back and that's what social media is he, he definitely said, said he was funny though he said he, he said was funny. funny he said yeah. nobody can say earthquake not funny he right. definitely said that yes yeah, and, and I appreciate that because it's the truth. Why do you say you can't read? Where did that come from? I don't know. I mean, you, y'all you into it. To rest right there, first of all, it's a lie. Because I couldn't, I used to be a WBLS. You did radio for radio, I did years. radio. And everybody in radio wants to be like y'all to be syndicated. Mm-hmm. But if you're not syndicated and you just got one goddamn station, only way you get some money off live reads. <laughs> in traffic and the rest of them. So it came to that. And another thing. Ninth grade, I was picked to go to Georgetown in the Upper Brown program. <laughs> Upper Brown ain't no joke. Upper Brown Upper program. Brown 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 no joke. Upper quick. Brown program. So you, what do y'all think? Y'all think that it's forgiven with Earthquake? Earthquake don't seem to be so wrapped up into cussing Cat Williams out. As a matter of fact, he, from what he's saying, he's still cool with Cat Williams. Never mind, he called him illiterate. 
he still likes the guy. That's what I'm gathering from what he said. And he doesn't hold any malice because he says it's all comedy. But Cat was serious. Obviously, he was serious, but Earthquake is not putting it to great credence because when you like somebody, you just like them. So here's part of the interview with Shannon Sharp talking to Cat Williams about what I previously mentioned. Would you be willing to do another Friday? Cube already asked me to write it. I was supposed to have been writing it. That's This is what these guys are mad about. Like, we lost some great people before this movie could come out regardless. Right. And so, yes, there desperately needs to be one. Um, um, but... Um, we miss John Witherspoon in a way that can't really be quantified, right. if I'm being honest with you. And um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, oh, not Smokey. Oh, Lord. <laughs> if I didn't know no better, I'd tell you he's the greatest. I don't care what you say. <laughs> to be confident and not delusional is a real skill. Most of these confident people we see is really delusional. Well, you don't think you don't think they asked Chris Tucker to come back in the second in the second, in the second Friday? Smokey, Smokey was all in for Smokey. There ain't no Friday without Smokey. We all agree to that, and there's no next Friday without Friday, and there's no Friday after next without Friday. Nah, we talking about the rule because you said that they don't... Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Chris was allowed to make the decision. At the time that this is happening, Cat Williams is known for smoking weed. Willie Nelson is known for smoking weed. Right. Snoop's known for smoking weed, but none of us is really known except Willie. And I'm saying... Chris Tucker didn't want to be the poster child for smoking weed. He don't smoke weed like that. Right. He in the church. He Michael Jackson's best friend. Christmas. Michael Jackson called him Christmas. You ever met a man that gave you a little nickname like that? No. Mm -mm, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. That Cat William sure is malicious. What you got to say about that, Chris Tucker? What kind of nickname did you give Michael? If he called you Christmas, maybe you gave him Easter. Did you call him Easter? So now getting back to Earthquake. You know, guys, I got off the beaten track. I couldn't help it. You know, I can't help myself. You know, I talk about everything under the sun from one topic to the next. Anyway, getting back to Earthquake. And I guess he's seen a bigger picture of them working together in the future. He doesn't want to make any waves and cuss them out too much because he can go there if he wanted to. But when you are looking at a greater picture and you see that, okay, we may be doing business in the future, let's not get into any big beef where we cannot work together. Like Wanda and Cat Williams could never work together because allegedly Cat said her husband pulled a gun on him so they cannot work together in the future. And this is what he didn't want. He didn't want that separation from not working with another gifted comedian in the future. At least that's what I think. I think he doesn't want to make too many waves and not work with Cap ever again. So he chose the high road. And he said, you know what? Cat and I could have talked this out if this is how we felt. But that's not what it's all about. Cat Williams was roasting them. Like if he was on a comedy special, he took the time with Channel Sharp and he laid out all his grievances. He laid it out to the point where it became comical. Like if he was on one of his specials. As a matter of fact, I think that was the best, one of the best anyway, interviews I have heard in a long time. I was hollering. I was on the floor cracking up. But I do like that part where he says, have you ever had a man call you Christmas? And then he had that list. The way he made his face alone was just, it was, it was, that was all I wanted. That facial expression. Have you ever had a man call you Christmas? I said, no, Kat, no, not today. I had my teeth done. I am in pain. 
And you got me cracking up, bringing all this air into this wisdom tooth, giving me all this pain. Yes, but that was Earthquake's rebuttal. He didn't have much to say. I was expecting a little more, you know, like he would really go in on Cat, but no, he didn't. Because now I know he likes the guy. He considers them friends. But like friends like those, you don't need enemies, honey. <laughs> friends like those would cut you up in your sleep. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. He can't read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Earthquake also recently had an interview with Sway and he was telling him it's not true. Of course, if it's not true, you still need to address it. Some people like to bury their heads in the sand and say it's going to go away if I don't address it. But some things you do need to address because if he had let this go, people would really believe that he is illiterate. Just recently heard um, the, the Cat Williams interview mm -hmm. uh, and your name was mentioned. What, what, what is your, your tape? He mentioned you being illiterate at one point. What is your response to that? None. Okay. I don't, I mean, what's there to say? It's not true. I thought we was cool. And if you felt that, you know, we could have handled that man to man. So I don't, I don't, I don't get into that with that. You know what I mean? Whatever reason he felt that he needed to mention my name in a fraudulent way. And for whatever reason, so be it. I don't, I don't answer shit like that. First of all, if you answer it, it's going to continue on. Social media is just a fire, and uh -huh. I refuse to put another log in it when it has something to do with my name on it. Uh -huh. Personally speaking, you know, where the jokes at? I'm a comedian. See, that's what I do. I'm in the joke telling business. And so, um, you know, you need to be funny and tell the jokes and let it stand on that. That's all we got in common. It's the jokes. It's the jokes, right? It's the jokes. That ain't something you would joke about, though. Well, to, to each his own. I don't know, joke about it or say it, but just because he say it, don't make it true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know we are. Any man could be authenticated, but the words come out of his mouth makes it so true. It kills me with this shit that certain people say something and a money, you, you have to address it. Because of what? Mm -hmm. Who is he? To, I have to address anything that he says. I refuse to participate in it. You know what I mean? Because, see, I don't, me personally, I don't uh, play fight. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's either it's on as it ain't. You know what I mean? It's just that simple. And so the rest of that shit you can hold. And a great philosopher, 50 Cent, said, if you ain't ready to kill a nigga, then avoid confrontation at all, all at all risks. Man, that's, that's a great philosopher right there. That deserves a reference. 50 Cent, that shit. You better be listening to that. Great philosopher said, if you ain't ready to kill a motherfucker, then avoid the confrontation at all costs. Yo. And that's what I do. So some things are true what Kat said and some things aren't true. We just have to wonder why he said the things that were not true. Why did he make stuff up on these people? Well, some of them anyway. We know one person in particular, Earthquake. He did say when he was on the radio show, plenty of reading was involved. And then he was picked to attend the Georgia Upward Bound program. And that is a no small feat for a young man. He said he was a young person at the time. I think he was uh, pre-adolescence. So he just is left to wonder, why is Cat Williams hating on his fellow comedians? Is it out of jealousy? Did they get a part that he wanted? We don't know. Only Cat can tell us that. Now, putting all jokes aside, Earthquake did say the only thing they have in common is comedy. So they're not really bosom buddies, no kind of friendship like I would imagine. No, it's not like that. They are acquaintances through their work, through comedy. On that note, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as yet, please do so and hit that thumbs up bell if you haven't done so as yet. I'm over and out. I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.